Welcome, my future nurses. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I am so glad you're here. It just shows your conviction, your desire to conquer this nursing thing. And I'm privileged to assist you in that conquest. So for those who are, who are not familiar with me and my qualifications to um, assist you in your nursing journey, um, I would encourage you to please check out our introduction video on our channel. So we're not going to waste any time. We're gonna go straight into our content, okay? All right, so we're gonna be learning about ABGs, arterial blood gas, ABG interpretation. So I came up with this um, method as you, as you would call it, when I was tasked to um, tutor some students or teach some students how to interpret ABGs. Um, and I could not get the other ABG methods that were out there. I know there's Rome, there's the tic-tac-toe method. So after thinking about it long and hard, I came up with this method, which has been 100% as far as interpretation of ABGs. So if you do understand any of those methods, please stick with that. Um, it's less stress in the exam. But if you have no idea where to start, I encourage you to give this a try. Before we move ahead, first let's define what an ABG is. ABG stands for arterial blood gas, and it's actually a blood test performed mostly by respiratory therapists or those certified to um, access uh, arterial blood. So ABG measures your acid base, your pH level in your blood. It also measures your oxygen concentration and also carbon dioxide. So basically it tells you how well a person's lung is able to move oxygen to the bloodstream and also remove carbon dioxide from the bloodstream. So it actually pick, gives you a good picture of health um, of a person. So here are our ABG components. We call it ABG players. Um, this is kind of a game. We have pH. pH is the value of acidity or alkalinity in arterial blood. CO2 refers to your respiratory system because this is where you will breathe out CO2. And bicarb, HCO3, refers to your metabolic system, and that compensation happens in the kidneys. Other um, components you must know is your normal ranges, and these you have to memorize. So we have pH, which is in the range of 735 to 745. We have CO2 or carbon dioxide, which is also 3545. You'll start seeing a pattern with some of these uh, critical values. 3545 for CO2 and uh, HCO3 or bicarb is 22 to 26. So if you can't remember bicarb, I try to remember is the age I would want to live forever. Between 22 and 26, you'll uh, remember the range for normal bicarb. Oh, let me go back. And then we have SAO2, um, which is our oxygen saturation. Um, or PaO2 between 80 and 100. Your SpO2, which is measured by your um, pulse oximeter, is between 95 and 100. So all these components are critical to get a good picture of the patient. Okay, so let's get into the, um, the method. So here's our legend. This is what we're, our interpretation is gonna be. Your ABG could be fully compensated, which means your pH is normal. Your pH is within that 3545 range. Partially compensated, your pH is abnormal. And uncompensated, your pH is also abnormal. But a key thing here is that the other players, the three players we mentioned, will be either on the line or offline. We'll, you'll understand more when we get into the setup. So grab a piece of paper. We're going to set up um, our ABG interpretation. So you're going to have a piece of paper. You're going to draw 
three lines. Your top line is your pH, second line is your CO2, and third line is your ACO3. And you could draw a line right down the middle, okay? You're going to put your normal ranges for your pH, which is 3545, five, your CO2, 4535, five, okay? But remember to switch up um, the switch up the, the range, okay? So we're gonna put our pH, 3545, CO2, 4535, and our HO3, the age you wanna live forever, 22 to 26, okay? Put that on your paper. Okay, so we know CO2 represents respiratory. When we look at CO2, it's the work of the lungs. HCO3 is our metabolic system, okay? So on the left side of the screen, you have your acid, and then on the other side, you have your base. So remember to always um, turn your CO2 around to ref reflect your acid and base ranges. And our objective is to get that pH within normal range, okay? So we, we have our setup, pretty simple. Okay, so let's go. Here's our first ABG. Our pH is 7.22, our CO2 is 55, and our bicarb, HCO3, is 25. So basically, you just have to plot the numbers on the graph. So here's our pH, is off the line, out of range. Next, our CO2, also, out of range on the acid side. And then finally, our bicarb, which is on the line, is still in range. Your first step is to pair the pH with the closest player. In this case, it's the CO2 or respiratory. Second step, we're gonna see what the third player is doing. Um, in this case, our bicarb is still on the line, still at home, so no compensation is happening. So our so our interpretation of this ABG is uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Okay, let's try it again. Here's our next ABG. pH 7.33, CO2 is 62, bicarb 35. So let's plot the numbers. CO2, 62 and bicarb is 35. Step number one, pair the pH with the closest player. In this case, again, it's uh, CO2 or respiratory. Step number two, look to see what the third player is doing. In this case, um, bicarb is off the line. It's working on its way to compensation. So our interpretation of this ABG is partially compensated respiratory acidosis. All right, we're gonna put in a, another value, another player into the mix, um, and that's our PaO2 uh, value, which determines um, the severity of hypoxemia. It's basically measuring our oxygen level in the blood. So these are our ranges, normal range is 80 to 100. Anything below that would indicate hypoxemia. Okay, here's our first pH, 7.25, CO2 62, um, oxygen is 65, and our bicarb is 26. So let's plot the numbers. We have our pH off the line on the acid side. CO2 is 60, also on the acid side. And then our third player, bicarb, is at 26 on the line. It's working, it's on the, um, the tail end of, of the range. The first step, pair our pH with the closest player. In this case, again, it's CO2. And then step number two, see what the third player is doing. HCO3 still on online, no compensation is happening. So our interpretation is uncompensated respiratory acidosis with hypoxemia. Okay, so the uh, PA, PaO2 of 65 shows that this patient is hypoxemic. Here's our next ABG. pH is 7.45, CO2 is 49, O2 is 68, and our bicarb is 34. 
CO2, 49, a little bit out of range. Bicarb, 34. So our closest player to the pH is the metabolic. It's on the same side. It's bicarb. And step number two, our CO2 is the third person out. It's off the line going to work on its way to compensation. And the pH is within normal, so it is a compensated ABG. So it's compensated metabolic alkalosis with hypoxemia. Okay, here's our next ABG. pH 7.25, CO2 is 68, O2 is 48, and our HCO3 or bicarb is 31. Step number one, pair the pH with the closest player. In this case, is respiratory. Step number two, see what the third player out is doing. Bicarb is off the line going to work on its way to compensation. So our interpretation of this ABG is respiratory, partially compensated respiratory acidosis. The third player is off the line, however, the pH is still out of range, but in time. Bicarb is a pretty slow way to compen uh, for compensation, but you'll eventually get there. Good. Here's our next uh, ABG. pH is 7.37. CO2 is 57. Bicarb is 32, and we have an O2 of 70. Step number one, pair the pH with the closest player. Note that the pH is within normal range because it's on the line. Step number two, see what the third player out is doing. In this case, is our bicarb. It's off the line, on its way to compensation. It's doing its job. Our interpretation is fully compensated respiratory acidosis with hypoxemia. So these are the case when you do have a normal um, pH and you wondered what was the abnormality before it compensated? And this is one way you could find out. Try this, these extra practice examples. Do this on your own and see how you do. If you're getting this, I am so happy. Here's our last one. pH is 7.38, CO2 is 43, and bicarb is 24. That is a normal ABG like you and me, no imbalance. Okay, good. So we're gonna um, practice some NCLEX questions, just a few questions to see if you could put this into context. We have a patient in the ICU, he has ABG. What is your interpretation? Our pH is 7.41, CO2 is 42, bicarb is 26. The PaO2 is 95% and his O2 saturation is 96. Respiratory, he's, he's breathing at 16 breaths per minute. Is there a reason to call the doctor based on this ABG? If you chose two, it's a normal ABG, just monitor the patient, you are on the right track. Here's our next question. You have an ABG result of an intubated, mechanically vented patient. His pH is 7.33. His CO2 is 50. His um, I mean, his O2 is 50, his CO2 is 49, bicarb 27. The nurse would anticipate what priority action. So you would definitely need to increase his um, respiratory rate and also his FiO2. He needs more oxygen and he also needs to blow off that CO2. A patient intubated and, and ventilated, the ABG, the morning ABG shows a CO2 of 50. What does the nurse think is happening with this patient? He is in a hypoventilation state, okay? So I hope, I hope, I hope this has been beneficial to you. Um, I wanna thank you so much for watching and I hope you like our channel. I hope you subscribe and please share with anybody who you think would benefit from this, especially nursing students. Um, and please leave a comment. We are going to be working on more content and we're gonna be reading your comments. If you say, hey, can you make a video on this concept? We will be glad to uh, assist you with that. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon.